Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good. We have got such a derby-centric show this week, Brian, don't we? Yeah, why not, Matt? We're only two months away from the big show, the Kentucky Derby, the first Saturday in May. So, yeah, we got a lot to talk about today, folks. We hope you enjoy this derby-centric show, as Matt called it. We're going to jump right into our Kentucky Derby Top 10 Rankings, Matt, which is always fun, which is always controversial as to who we have. It's a consensus list. Let's get that, uh, let's get that Top 10 up right away, Matt. Um, you know, neither of us, neither of us, Matt Shipman, had Smile Happy number one on our list. But as a consensus Top 10, Smile Happy became number one. Yeah, Brian, I... <laughs> I struggled a lot trying to make uh, my top 10 to give to you to form our uh, consensus list. I, I, I'm thinking back to last year when we felt that the Derby trail was pretty wide open. And if we thought it was pretty wide open last year, we got to think that it's even more wide open this year. Well, it, you know, it's becoming more and more apparent that Bob Baffert Probably, I, I thought we'd see some Baffert horses in the Derby a month ago or two months ago, and it, and, it, and it's looking less likely now that there will be any Bob Baffert horses. And he's kind of dominated the Kentucky Derby over the years, so yeah, that in and of itself makes this a pretty wide open group. And um, Smile Happy, you know, if I had to pick one horse to be the most likely to big to run a big race right now, uh, two months out from the Kentucky Derby, it would probably be Smile Happy because. He ran a very good return race, Matt. The son of Run Happy, trained by Kenny McPeak uh, in the Risen Star. And if you look back at these rankings, um, the top three horses consensus-wise on our Kentucky Derby top 10 right now, Matt, all ran in that Risen Star at Fairgrounds. Yes, indeed, Brian. And they all ran uh, ran notable races. Obviously, the winner, you know, uh, Epicenter gets the kudos and, and – uh, uh, ran really well, but but n nothing negative in my eyes about the performance of Smile Happy coming off a layoff, making his first start of the year, and 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 for uh, Zandon also uh, things uh, things didn't go his way uh, to start the race, and and he rallied really well uh, to to get up for third for third in the risen star. So I think those were two very good efforts. And I expect both of uh, both smile, happy and Zandon to move forward off of those performances. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I agree with you, obviously, because we have them as our consensus top three right now. Uh, smile, happy, the, the second place finisher epicenter, the winner and Zandon, the third place finisher. Let's take a quick look at that uh, Risen Star mat again. Obviously, we're calling it a keep prep, and obviously, we like the performance of all three of the runners. Yeah, and, and you know, and, and it, there we go, uh, coming around the turn in the in the in the Risen Star with uh, Epicenter getting a you know getting a comfortable lead getting loose on the lead, and I don't care what race you're in, what kind of uh, class race you're in, uh, that makes a horse very hard to beat. And and he's kind of stamped himself as uh, uh, a promising horse. I don't think adding distance on for the Derby is going to be hard on him. No, I agree with you, Matt. Uh, yeah, it, speed is always dangerous. Epicenter is actually one of the more experienced horses on this list now with five starts. He's won three. He's a, a two-time stakes winner down at Fairgrounds. He looked good at Churchill Downs, but uh, speed is always dangerous, and he is starting to show himself as perhaps the most dangerous of all the speed horses on this list. But like you said, uh, second-place finisher, Smile Happy, this was his first race in a while. He had to come from pretty far back. He was weaving through horses as you follow them there with the red cap getting up for second in the Risen Star. So I think it was a very good performance off that pretty easy pace for the winner. Easy winner at the center. So another reason to like Happy Center. But Smile Happy came back with a good performance. And Zandon, you know, he's only one of three. It's, it's a little bit hard to imagine that a horse who's only one of three 
is this high on our Kentucky Derby list, but you have to be impressed with both his Remsen performance last fall in his second career race, and then breaking back, having a wide trip, and being third in this uh, in this risen star. Yeah, less than ideal trips in both of those races, and and uh, falling short of good horses, horses that are prominent uh, in our uh, Derby top ten. Absolutely. Uh, let's look, Matt, at the next horse on our list. It's number five, uh, four is White Abario. White Abario, a son of race day. Now, White Abario was beaten by both Smile Happy and Classic Causeway to end his two-year-old season at Churchill Downs. I don't think he had the best trip, but he was pretty well beaten third that day. But he came back with a big performance, probably at his home track. He probably likes Gulfstream quite a bit. And White Abario ran a very good race in the Holy Bowl. Yeah, that's for sure. Safi Joseph Jr.'s or horses usually uh, have their best at Gulfstream Park and, and White Abario in the Holy Bull against a field that at that time was one of the better fields that had been put together for uh, Derby prep. Uh, uh, ran a big race, a very, very big buyer speed figure, upper 90s, 97 or something. Those are kind of numbers that uh, uh, lead you to think of success in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, Safi says the Florida Derby is next. Um, you know, uh, at Gulfstream, stay there on, on his favorite track. Uh, I don't know about the extra distance, though, going 10 furlongs in the Kentucky Derby. But based on that Holly Bolt performance, he had to be ranked fairly high. Totally agree with you, Matt. White of Barrio looked really good in the Holy Bowl. I think it was the second best prep so far behind the Risen Star. I did the next horse on our list, Classic Causeway. He ran probably against a little bit lesser at uh, Tampa Bay Downs in the Sam F. Davis, but he was an impressive winner. He kind of split spile happy and White of Barrio last fall in that key race, the Kentucky Jockey Club. So he's run against good horses since his win uh, in, in, in a maiden, uh, his debut uh, race at Saratoga last year got a little bit easier spot at tampa bay downs and made the most of it with a good looking win we expect the son of giants causeway trained by brian lynch to be headed to the tampa bay downs next matt and uh i don't know i i, I think i do you kind of said white abari you're not sure about 10 furlongs i kind of like classic causeways potential to go 10 furlongs just a little bit more than white abari i do too and 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 uh, trainer Brian Lynch, he wanted to see a good performance. He really wanted to see Classic Causeway get another win under his belt in the Sam F. Davis. I think he picked a good spot. He uh, Classic Causeway as a two-year-old. Got some really good experience, ran in, a, ran in a couple of tough fields after his maiden win at Saratoga. Uh, flashed so much potential in that uh, maiden win and lived up to it. Uh, in the Sam F. Davis. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Matt, I'm a little bit perturbed with you. I hate to say it. I'm a little bit mad at you, my uh, my good friend and horse center partner, because the next horse on the list, you didn't even have in your top 10. I, I, I don't get it, Matt Shipman. Secret Oath, folks. Secret Oath, the Philly, trained by D. Wayne Lucas, was actually my number one. That's right. Number one on my list was Secret Oath, Matt. Uh, I'm going to talk about her in a second, but you like her too a little bit, don't you? Oh, absolutely, Brian. And hey, after all these years, Brian, I can handicap my Brian Zipsy pretty well. And I figured that you would have Secret Oath prominently placed. Um, and, and you, and you know, it's been a while since I cashed a good ticket. I wish I had a Vegas line on Zipsy uh, and Secret Oath, but uh, it's been a long time. And it's the point system that's done it that has kept the Philly from running in the Kentucky Derby. But the, this D. Wayne Lucas, wow, wow, wow. You know, we talked about uh, the wide open nature of the boys on the Derby trail. Uh, Secret Oath has been so impressive. What an explosive move in that secret, sorry, from Secret Oath in that honeybee down the stretch. What a turn of foot. Hey, the coach, D. Wayne Lucas, has taken the Phillies to the Kentucky Derby and won before. Uh, um, so why not? 
Oh, absolutely. Why not? In fact, I, I, I'd be surprised if she doesn't run against boys here soon, Matt. I guess this video picked up right before she had to steady just a little bit on the far turn. But when that rail opened up, uh, she was really good, as she has been in her last three starts, just romping each time. Uh, she's no secret anymore, Matt, secret oath. And uh, the daughter of Arrogate, the young, powerful sire Arrogate, who, of course, was lost too soon. Uh, she could be any kind. She looks like a 10 furlong filly to me. She looks like she's still got some things to learn. And as you said, D. Wayne Lucas has never, ever ducked uh, running in big races with all his good fillies over the years. So I look for Secret Oath to get points in the Arkansas Derby next. That's what I'm expecting. I think she's been the best three-year-old in the country so far. She's number one on my list. I think she can go 10 furlongs, Matt. Who else do we have on this Kentucky Derby list? Number seven, interestingly, uh, we found out is a scratch. We're going to talk more about Fountain of Youth, of course, next. But the uh, Mo Donegal was scratched out of the uh, Fountain of Youth already with a fever, uh, kind of out there on the 12 hole. The son of Uncle Mo, though, has looked good. I thought he looked very good without the best trip last time, having to wait, 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 and then swing way wide when White Abaria was running away from the field in that uh, holy bowl and he came flying at the end so i think mo donegal probably now headed to the wood memorial at aqueduct the track he loves nine furlongs i think that'll be right up his alley yeah no question and, and honestly brian i was surprised to see mo donegal entered uh in the fountain of youth because uh, after the holy bowl i thought pletcher had said that they were going to point to the wood memorial on a, on a, as tr as you mentioned on a track where he already has a nice victory yeah, absolutely, Matt. It, it, the Wood Memorial seems to make more sense, especially when they drew the 12 hole in that mile 16th race uh, Saturday at Gulfstream Park. One of the horses in the race, and now the horse I expect to be favored, is Emmanuel, Matt. I had this horse on my top 10 after his maiden win. I thought he came back good in the allowance win. We're going to talk more about him soon in the Fountain of Youth. Number nine is a horse that you've always liked. That's early voting, trained by Chad Brown. Yeah, as Chad's looking for his first Kentucky Derby winner, um, early voting moved up and and got a victory in the Withers. Um, you know, and and I guess we all said, okay, who did he beat in that race? Well, he ended up now beating the winner of the Rebel Stakes in uh, that seventy-five to one upset, Un Ojo. Yeah, when I saw early voting just dominate the Withers, my first thought was, well, there's not much behind it. But Unoho came back and ran a big race to win the Rebels. So, yeah, that, that that's a feather in early voting's uh, cap. And uh, he's a son of gun runner. He should get better for Chad Brown. He's very interesting. Things will get tougher, but he's an interesting addition to our top 10. As is Rattle and Roll, who we haven't seen for a while since he won the grade one Breeders' Futurity. Again, Matt, another horse we're going to talk more about here in a minute as we switch to the Fountain of Youth. Are you ready to make the transition from the Derby to the Fountain of Youth? Absolutely. Let's do it. I think we've been talking about these Fountain of Youth horses already in the top 10. Yeah, absolutely. Let's let's jump right into that Fountain of Youth, Matt. It is uh, 13 horses drawn. As we already said, Mo Donegal is out. You see the big red line there. We know Mo Donegal, who was, could have been the favorite out there. Uh, in the 12 hole, he's he's scratched out of the Fountain of Youth. I expect the other Pletcher horse, uh, Emmanuel, to now be the favorite map, number eight, three to one. He's looked very good in his first two starts. Absolutely a son of more than ready for Todd Pletcher. Uh, two for two, two wins in Florida. The first one coming at Gulfstream Park and then the second in an allowance race stretching out at Tampa Bay Downs. Um, and when he got into the stretch and was finally asked to run, he kicked away and drew off. Yeah, he did. We'll we'll put that up now for you folks, that Tampa Bay allowance, because I think the horse he beat there on the rail is named Glider. We'll talk about him a little bit in the Gotham. I think he's a pretty good horse, but you can see how easy Emmanuel is doing this in his second career start, a mile and a 40-yard allowance at Tampa Bay Downs. Uh, Matt, he is uh, kind of a powerhouse looking horse. Uh, I'm not sure a mile and a quarter is going to be his best distance, a son of more than ready, but he's looked good at a mile. He's looked good at a mile 40 yards. He's won over the track. I do think he's the horse to beat in this Fountain of Youth field. 
Yeah, Brian, I feel the same way about that. Yeah, number two, uh, the, the horse that probably will buy for favoritism is the number two, and that's Simplification. And Simplification ran a pretty darn good race, Matt Schiffman, uh, in the, uh, the the Holy Bull. He actually was uh, just ahead of a fast-closing Mo Donegal at the wire, uh, but uh, behind White of Barrio. But he did not, not get off to a good start all in that Holy Bull. So I think Simplification... Having won the Mucho Macho Man pretty impressively the start before uh, is a real threat again here in the Fountain of Youth. Yeah, I agree. I, if, if I remember, Simplification was my pick in that Holy Bull. I, I saw him in that field as a horse who could maybe get to the lead and, and go wire to wire. So uh, that sure didn't happen because in the... Uh, uh, in the Holy Bull, he tossed his head coming out of the gate and, and broke really slowly. And, and for most horses, particularly who had had success on the front end, like he did in the Mucho Macho Man, you would have expected that that was it. He'd lost all chance. Um, so it was a real credit to simplification to gather himself up and make a really nice rally. He was coming... Uh, he was gaining ground, coming fast uh, at the end of the Holy Bull. Yeah, we can uh, we can cue that race up, Matt. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's obviously a versatile horse now, uh, a, a horse that wired the Mucho Macho Man, as you said, and then he rallied here after that bad start in the uh, in the Holy Bull. So Antonio Zeno has an interesting horse, another son of not this time. You see Mo Donegal there flying at the end. So certainly a horse to watch uh, out for going longer, we think it could be Mo Donegal. But Simplification ran a very good race, and now we know he can do multiple things. He doesn't need to be on the lead. He can pass horses for sure. Those are the two favorites as we see the manual and simplification, Matt. But the truth is there are a ton of interesting horses in there. I mean, we could run down this list. Maybe in due time is the third choice. Another son of not this time, trained by Kelly Breen. Um, he was beaten in a sprint, in a very fast sprint two starts ago. But that uh, last one where he stretched out to a mile uh, uh, looked very good. He's two for three. And I guess he could be any kind, too. Yeah, I think so. I guess, you know, uh, he was a little bit of a precocious two-year-old because he won his debut at Monmouth Park all the way back in July. And that's so rare, especially for a, a horse that ends up showing up in the uh, Derby Trail. But he had some time off after that uh, that win in the summer at Monmouth. Um, you, you mentioned the second race and then a nice allowance win at Gulfstream Park. Uh, in February, going a mile against a pretty strong field. Yeah, absolutely. In due time is a very interesting horse. And 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 we have seen derby horses over the years, not maybe so much the last few years, but horses who kind of threw in an early two-year-old race and then were out for a while. And, and just that foundation, I think, can help them as they move forward. Matt, uh, again, a lot of horses to talk about. We need to talk about Rattle and Roll, who's, who's Drew, where is he? He's the number six. I got him at six to one on my morning line, our morning line here, Matt. Uh, when last seen, he looked really good winning that Keeneland race, the Breeders' Futurity, grade one Breeders' Futurity over Classic Causeway. Uh, but it's been a while since we've seen Rattle and Roll, the son of Connect. Yeah, it has been a while, all the way back. I think it was October, Brian, for the uh, Breeders' Futurity. And like you mentioned, that was a very strong field. Uh, uh, obviously, we've talked about how Classic Causeway has come back. Another one for Kenny McPeak. I don't know if uh, if Kenny is going to have rattle and roll at 100%, if we can expect a victory with that much time off in a big field like this. Yeah, the good news for rattle and roll is there is speed in this race, and, and I think that could help his late run. But I agree with you. I, I, I'm wondering if this is more of a uh, start to get rolling uh, come back in the bluegrass with a better performance and then be really ready for the Kentucky Derby. But certainly an interesting horse as he makes his first start, Matt, in, in about five months. Uh, a lot of horses, like I said, howling time, I think still could be good. Dean Delivers looks like a nice underrated horse. AP Secret could be a good horse. What about uh, High Oak, the number nine, the son of Gormley, trained by Bill Mott, one of two? 
Bill Matraney's in the race, Matt. And uh, Gormley was a good two-year-old. He won the Saratoga Special early on, fourth in the hopeful, and that's the last time we saw him. Yeah, and, and certainly had to have been a very precocious two-year-old to get trainer Bill Mott a debut win, and a debut win on the dirt is particularly rare for Mott. Came right back, won a stakes race, as you mentioned, and then uh, was fourth in the hopeful, stretching out to seven furlongs. He's been off since then. Um, I think this is an ambitious uh, race to come back in, as we mentioned, with the uh, same thing about rattle and roll. Yeah, yeah, and I said Rattle and Roll's been about five months. I guess Gormley's been closer to, uh, to 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 six months now. So you're right, an ambitious spot, stretching out for the first time. But I know a lot of people like uh, High Oak. Uh, he's kind of an impressive-looking individual, as is Galt, uh, Songbird's full brother, Matt. Uh, he ran a pretty good race. He's been getting slowly improving for trainer Bill Mott. Uh, I thought he ran a pretty good race, setting the pace in the holy ball um he couldn't hold off quite a barrio of course but he hung around pretty well to be fourth beating a little over five lengths in that holy ball yeah and and i don't think bill mott would be uh putting him in a race like this if he didn't think he had a chance to run a good uh, good race yeah and if he steps another takes another step forward galt songbird's full brother is another horse to watch we still haven't gotten to the horse that uh, I want to talk about a little bit, Matt, and his name is Giant Game. And if you look at the past performances, Giant Game has absolutely zero chance coming off a horrid-looking finish in the Holy Bull, Matt. But I think there's a little bit more to Giant Game than we saw, of course, in the Holy Bull. Yeah, I would think so. Uh, he was a, a, a promising two-year-old, Brian, uh, from... Dale Romans, and uh, uh, I, I would have to assume that uh, Romans didn't have Giant Game ready to run his best in the Holy Bull um, to bring him back, uh, you know, in a month in the Fountain of Youth. Yeah, well, actually, what I heard from one of the owner, the owner group, a pretty big owner group there for Giant Game, is Luis Saez thought he was sitting on a winner about three furlongs out in the Holy Bull. And then the horse flipped his palate and and wow. just struggled to breathe the rest of the way. And, of course, dropped way out of it, finishing a distant eighth in that holy bowl. So uh, Saez, interestingly, chooses a different horse here. I can't blame him for getting on a manual after those two big wins to start his career. But Saez really liked what he had early on in holy bowl. And then flipping the palate, that's a, uh, that's a huge excuse. I think Giant Game uh, might be ready to run a big race for trainer Dale Romans here this time after he corrected that uh, for the Fountain of Youth. Matt, it's time. This is our race of the week. It's time to make our selection. Who do you like best in this interesting mile and a 16th Fountain of Youth at Gulfstream Park? Interesting race for sure, Brian. I am going to go with the promising two for two, Emmanuel for Tad Pletcher. Yeah, I will be using Emmanuel for sure. I think he's the horse to beat. I also think he's the favorite. I'm going to go with a long shot as my top pick, though. I'll be betting both of them. I'm going to go with Giant Game because I think I, I believe what I heard about uh, Saez thinking he had a ton of horse on the turn before uh, before he couldn't breathe the rest of the way. So I think Giant Game, that third play finish in the Breeders' Cup, that win in Kentucky before that, I think he's a very good horse. And I think Roman knows what he's doing, bringing him back after he incident in the holly ball so i'm going to try him hopefully i'll get some big odds on giant game matt we still got a couple more races to talk about on the kentucky derby trail matt don't go away yet uh let's talk gotham now uh, on our topics page i know we said pletcher's pair but of course uh uh i'm sorry i we're going san felipe oh there's there's the producer error. okay we're going san felipe next matt we're going to talk about san felipe and i think this is a race that we can talk about really quickly because the San Felipe has been a pretty key race for the Kentucky Derby over the years, but frankly, I don't see it this year. I don't either, Brian. Uh, uh, you know, a field of seven, a pretty lackluster field of seven uh, for sure in uh, San Felipe. Yeah, it is a lackluster field. Uh, you know, I, I, I want to kind of think that somebody can come out of this. Like I said, the San Felipe has produced 
good horses for year after year practically. Uh, but this year it's a question mark. I think the two obvious horses are coming out of the seven furlong San Vicente. Forbidden Kingdom is a son of uh, American Pharaoh trained by uh, Richard Mandala who won, who wired that San Vicente nice. He, he is the horse to beat. The horse who he did beat in that, uh, or one of the horses he beat in that San Vicente is a lightly raced Baffert runner named uh, Doppelganger, a son of Into Mischief. He was favored pretty good there in the San Vicente, and he kind of ran evenly to be fourth, wasn't beaten by all that much. But I, I, I looked and looked at the other five horses, and I just could not get excited about any of them. So I, I think those are the two horses to beat here in the San Felipe. Yeah, I think I also want to mention uh, the number seven horse, Cabo Spirit, um, son of Pioneer of the Nile, was second in the Robert B. Lewis behind Messier. Yes, he was way behind Messier, but everybody was way behind Messier in that race. But he, in turn, was way ahead of the rest of that field. Again, the rest of that field was, you know, probably of the quality of the rest of this field. But before that, um, uh, <coughs> he had been doing really well uh, on the turf, had a really nice win uh, in the Eddie Logan, a graded stakes race uh uh, in California, I think Cabo Spirit is an interesting horse in this field also. <clears throat> oh, got some sneezes here that I can't edit out as the as the producer or not. But anyway, if any horse wins this San Felipe coming off a million length loss to Messier last time, I'm going to be even less on this San Felipe field than I was going in. So I'm not on the Capo Spirit train. Let's talk about the Gotham, the one mile, one turn Gotham at Aqueduct, because I think that's a much more interesting prep as far as horses who potentially could be very good, at least on my, in my opinion. And um, I think the two horses we start with here, Matt, are both two for two. Both of them have been winning sprinting. Let's start with Morello for trainer Steve Asmussen. Yeah, interesting horse. Two for two has been in New York. Uh, uh, <laughs> under, under the care of Asmussen's uh, New York trainer, Toby Sheets, who is a talented uh, conditioner uh, uh, to his, in his own right, uh, two for two, first in um, uh, Maiden Special Weight at Aqueduct, and then he came back in the Jimmy Winkfield uh, to rally and get the victory. Uh, um, interesting horse, seems to get fit in this field re really well, and I think uh, Morello is going <laughs> to get pace scenario not bear with me here i think the allergies are getting to me my eyes are turning red i'm sneezing crazy but uh, yeah morello i've been very impressed classic empire i think is a nice young sire this horse ran six and seven furlongs already at aqueduct uh carbon copies of each other where he kind of uh, was off the pace a little bit exploded and then just rolled down the stretch uh, there is speed in this gotham like i said about the fountain youth and I think it sets up really well for Morello. It sets up better for Morello than Dean's List, who also could be a very good horse. The son of Spitestown, trained by Todd Pletcher, two for two, uh, big debut win at Gulfstream Park, six furlongs. And then he came back uh, again, six furlongs at Gulfstream Park. So he's never been farther than six. He beat good horses in that second one that he had to uh, he had to work to win. Yeah. And, uh, you know, P Pletcher horses tend to win those battles down the stretch. And, and, and we talked about speed in here. Dean's list has that speed. Both of those victories were front end victory. He's fast. He's got class again. After both those wins, you had to wonder how far will he be able to go? Is he a, a legitimate Derby contender? I think Pletcher is making the right move. He's going to find out in the Gotham. Going a one-turn mile, and we'll see how far he can carry that speed. But one way or another, that speed is going to be a factor in this race. Yeah, absolutely. I could see Dean's List going wire to wire in this race. The only reason I, I think I like Morello better is because the way the way the uh, race sets up with more speed, speed like Rockefeller and a few others in here, uh, should give Dean's List something to worry about early. And then I think Morello is set up to pick up the pace. Uh, Rockefeller, I mentioned, I, I think he'll get bet again off a win in the Nashua, two starts back and a second in the sham for trainer Bob Baffert. 
He's also got speed. I just think he beat a weak field in the uh, in the Nashua. I think this is a much tougher field as he comes back to New York for the second time with the speed and 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 the fact that he's the high weight in the field outside post. I'm not on Rockefeller this time. I'm not either, Brian. And I agree with all the things he said. And and uh, to to talk about a little bit more, he was second in the sham behind New Grange, and and certainly was not flattered by New Grange performance uh, uh, recently. Yeah, yeah, Rockefeller. Uh, yeah, New Grange didn't do much in the in the in the Rebel, although he did win before that out there in Arkansas. So I think New Grange is a nice enough horse, but I think. Uh, I think Rockefeller has a, has a pretty tough assignment here as one of the three favorites in the Gotham. Of the others, I think Glider is the most interesting. We looked at Glider a little bit. Uh, he's trained by Mark Cassie. He made a big move to uh, win his first race on dirt two starts back in a main special weight. And then he made a pretty nice move to get up to Emmanuel in that allowance race we saw at Tampa Bay Downs. Of course, the last uh, eighth of a mile or so, Emmanuel kind of... Uh, exerted his superiority in the field but uh this race could set up pretty well for glider too as he drops down in distance just a little bit to a mile in a race with some speed yeah and he's uh right his tendency has been to fr to run from off the pace and you know a classic kind of uh mark cassie horse who as we know likes to run his horses into shape and and uh, glider probably will benefit from that second race second place performance behind Emmanuel. Yeah, and I think you'll agree with me, Matt, if if we had to guess, there's probably no horse as scary as Emmanuel in this Gotham. So uh, Glider, if he's the fourth or fifth choice here in the Gotham, he might be a horse worth especially using in your exotics. One other horse I think is going to be pretty darn big odds, and he's coming off two straight wins, a well-named horse. His name is Running Son of a Gun. I know he's only beat claimers so far, Matt, but I think his two races, his two wins at Aqueduct were pretty good. I think he can come from off the pace a little bit. You know I like Gunrunner, so why not throw him in just a little bit as a crazy long shot in this Gotham? And I think it's also worth noting and very interesting with running son of a gun that he was claimed out of his first two starts. His first two starts were in maiden claimers. He was taken out of one in uh, at Churchill Downs and came north with Bill Mo Bill Morey stable from Churchill to race in the winter. Um, won that second start in another maiden claimer. Got claimed again and then came out of that claiming race to step up and take a starter allowance. So interesting. Obviously, there was, some, was something that trainers liked a lot visually for him to get taken in those first two races. Yeah, he's making a big step up here in the Gotham, but I think the odds will be big. We saw a big long shot win last week at the Rebels. So uh, running son of a gun is my crazy bomb to throw in behind Morello and uh, 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 glider a little bit. And Dean's list, of course, I respect. How about you? You like somebody best in the Gotham? Yeah, I'm on I'm on Morello, too. I, he, he, you know, his first two races were very impressive. He won by four or five lengths both times, and he sure is getting the right set up. Yeah, he looks like the worst to beat to me as well, Matt Shipman. All right, folks, I apologize. The allergies uh, the last 10 minutes got to me a little bit. I apologize if that made your uh, viewing any less pleasurable. I tried to take my sneezes off screen. Matt, can I get a Kentucky Derby uh, show uh, closing remarks from you? Because we covered a lot here in a short amount of time. We sure did, Brian. Uh, our top 10. Uh, who knows? We'll see what happens to our top 10s after these uh, derby preps. Uh, three interesting races. So, enjoy them folks and and again i want to thank you for watching the show yeah thanks thanks to all you for watching thanks to our sponsor the best content site out there derby wars thanks to candace curtis our friend for the race graphics and and top 10 graphics uh kentucky derby show this week but there are also a lot of big stakes races especially at gulfstream park santa anita to uh, get excited about this week so enjoy it folks we'll be back right here next week with another big show on Horse Center. We'll see you then.